a Wikivide Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Jean-Michel Basquiat Jean-Michel Basquiat was an American artist of Haitian and Puerto Rican descent. Basquiat first achieved fame as part of Samo, an informal graffiti duo who wrote enigmatic epigrams in the cultural hotbed of the Lower East Side of Manhattan during the late 1970s where the hip-hop, punk, and street art cultures had coalesced. By the 1980s, he was exhibiting his neo-expressionist paintings in galleries and museums internationally. The Whitney Museum of American Art held a retrospective of his art in 1992. Basquiat's art focused on suggestive dichotomies, such as wealth versus poverty, integration versus segregation, and inner versus outer experience. He appropriated poetry, drawing, and painting, and married text and image, abstraction, figuration, and historical information mixed with contemporary critique. Basquiat used social commentary in his paintings as a springboard to deeper truths about the individual, as well as attacks on power structures and systems of racism. While his poetics were acutely political and direct in their criticism of colonialism and support for class struggle, he died of a heroin overdose at his art studio at the age of 27. On May 18, 2017, at a Sotheby's auction, a 1982 painting by Basquiat depicting a skull set a new record high for any American artist at auction selling for $110.5 million. Early Life Jean-Michel Basquiat was born in Brooklyn, New York, on December 22, 1960, shortly after the death of his elder brother, Max. He was the second of four children of Matilde Andrades and Gérard Basquiat. He had two younger sisters, Lysane, born in 1964, and Janine, born in 1967. His father, Gérard Basquiat, was born in Port-au-Prince, Haiti, and his mother, Matilde Basquiat, who was of Puerto Rican descent, was born in Brooklyn, New York. Matilde instilled a love for art in her young son by taking him to art museums in Manhattan and enrolling him as a junior member of the Brooklyn Museum of Art. Basquiat was a precocious child who learned how to read and write by the age of four and was a gifted artist. His teachers, such as artist Jose Machado, noticed his artistic abilities, and his mother encouraged her son's artistic talent. By the age of 11, Basquiat was fully fluent in French, Spanish, and English. In 1967, Basquiat started attending St. Anne's, an arts-oriented exclusive private school. He drew with Marc Prozzo, a friend from St. Anne's. They together created a children's book, written by Basquiat and illustrated by Prozzo. Basquiat became an avid reader of Spanish, French, and English texts, and a more than competent athlete, competing in track events. In September 1968, at the age of seven, Basquiat was hit by a car while playing in the street. His arm was broken and he suffered several internal injuries and he eventually underwent a splenectomy. While he was recuperating from his injuries, his mother brought him the Gray's Anatomy book to keep him occupied. This book would prove to be influential in his future artistic outlook. His parents separated that year and he and his sisters were raised by their father. The family resided in Borham Hill, Brooklyn, for five years. Then moved to San Juan, Puerto Rico in 1974, where Basquiat studied at St. John's School in Condado. After two years, they returned to New York City. When he was 13, his mother was committed to a mental institution, and thereafter spent time in and out of institutions. At 15, Basquiat ran away from home. He slept on park benches in Tompkins Square Park, and was arrested and returned to the care of his father within a week. Basquiat dropped out of Edward R. Murrow High School in the 10th grade at the age of 17 and then attended City as School, an alternative high school in Manhattan home to many artistic students who failed at conventional schooling. His father banished him from the household for dropping out of high school, and Basquiat stayed with friends in Brooklyn. He supported himself by selling t-shirts and homemade postcards. Career Basquiat went from being homeless and unemployed to selling a single painting for up to $25,000 in a matter of several years. In 1976, Basquiat 
and friend Al Diaz began spray painting graffiti on buildings in Lower Manhattan, working under the pseudonym Samo. The designs featured inscribed messages such as, Plush Safe He Think, Samo, and Samo as an escape clause. In 1978, Basky at worked for the unique clothing warehouse in their art department at 718 Broadway in NoHo and at night he began, Samo, painting his original graffiti art on neighborhood buildings. Unique's founder Harvey Russack discovered Basquiat painting a building one night. They became friends, and he offered him a day job. On December 11, 1978, The Village Voice published an article about the graffiti. When Basquiat and Diaz ended their friendship, the Samo project ended with the epitaph, Samo is dead, inscribed on the walls of Soho buildings in 1979. In 1979, Basquiat appeared on the live public access television show TV Party hosted by Glenn O'Brien, and the two started a friendship. Basquiat made regular appearances on the show over the next few years. That same year, Basquiat formed the noise rock band Test Pattern which was later renamed Grey which played at Arlene Schloss Open Space, Wednesdays at Taz, where in October 1979 Basquiat showed, among others, his Samo Color Xerox work. Gray also consisted of Shannon Dawson, Michael Holman, Nick Taylor, Wayne Clifford, and Vincent Gallo, and the band performed at nightclubs such as Max's Kansas City, CBGB, Hurrah, and The Mud Club. In 1980, Basquiat starred in O'Brien's independent film Downtown 81, originally titled New York Beat. That same year, Basquiat met Andy Warhol at a restaurant. Basquiat presented to Warhol samples of his work, and Warhol was stunned by Basquiat's genius and allure. The two artists later collaborated. Downtown 81 featured some of Gray's recordings on its soundtrack. Basquiat also appeared in the 1981 Blondie music video, Rapture, in a role originally intended for Grandmaster Flash, as a nightclub disc jockey. The early 1980s were Basquiat's breakthrough as a solo artist. In June 1980, Basquiat participated in the Times Square Show, a multi-artist exhibition sponsored by Collaborative Projects Incorporated and Fashion Moda where he was noticed by various critics and curators. In particular Emilio Mazzoli, an Italian gallerist saw the exhibition and invited Basquiat to Modena to have his world first solo show, that opened on May 23, 1981. In December 1981, René Ricard published the Radiant Child, in Art for a Magazine. In September 1982, Basquiat joined the Arnie Nanozai Gallery and worked in a basement below the gallery toward his first American one-man show, which took place from March 6 to April 1, 1982. In March 1982 he worked in Modena, Italy, again to work on his second Italian exhibition and from November, Basquiat worked from the ground floor display and studio space Larry Gargosian had built below his Venice, California home and commenced a series of paintings for a 1983 show, his second at Gargosian Gallery, then in West Hollywood. He brought along his girlfriend, then unknown aspiring singer Madonna. Gargosian recalls, everything was going along fine. Jean-Michel was making paintings, I was selling them, and we were having a lot of fun. But then one day Jean-Michel said, my girlfriend is coming to stay with me. I was a little concerned one too many eggs can spoil an omelette, you know? So I said, well, what's she like? And he said, he said, her name is Madonna. And she's going to be huge. I'll never forget that he said that. So Madonna came out and stayed for a few months and we all got along like one big, happy family. During this time he took considerable interest in the work that Robert Rauschenberg was producing at Gemini GEL in West Hollywood, visiting him on several occasions, and finding inspiration in the accomplishments of the painter. In 1982, Basquiat worked briefly with musician and artist David Bowie. In 1983, Basquiat produced a 12-inch rap single featuring hip-hop artists Ramelzy and k Rob, billed as Ramelzy vs. k Rob. The single contained two versions of the same track, Beatbop, on side one with vocals and, Beatbop, on side two as an instrumental. The single was pressed in limited quantities on the one-off Tartown Record Company label. The single's cover featured Basquiat's artwork, 
making the pressing highly desirable among both record and art collectors. At the suggestion of Swiss dealer Bruno Bischofberger, Warhol and Basquiat worked on a series of collaborative paintings between 1983 and 1985. In the case of Olympic rings, Warhol made several variations of the Olympic five-ring symbol, rendered in the original primary colors. Basquiat responded to the abstract, stylized logos with his oppositional graffiti style. Basquiat often painted in expensive Armani suits and would even appear in public in the same paint-splattered clothes. Drawings In his short life, Basquiat produced around 1,500 drawings, as well as around 600 paintings and many other sculpture and mixed-media works. Basquiat drew constantly and often used objects around him as surfaces when paper wasn't immediately to hand. From a very young age Basquiat would produce cartoon-inspired drawings alongside his mother, who had an interest in fashion design and sketching. Drawings became central to his work as he developed as an artist. Basquiat's drawings were produced in many different mediums, most commonly ink, pencil, felt tip or marker, and oil stick. Basquiat sometimes used Xerox copies of fragments of his drawings to paste onto the canvas of larger paintings. The first public showing of Basquiat's paintings and drawings was in 1981, New York slash New Wave. At PS1 in Long Island City, brought together by Mud Club co-founder and curator Diego Cortez, it was a group show that included pieces by William Burroughs, David Byrne, Keith Haring, Nan Golden, and Robert Mapplethorpe. The article in Art for a magazine entitled Radiant Child written by René Ricard after seeing the show at PS1, brought Basquiat to the attention of the art world. In 1984 Basquiat immortalized Ricard in two drawings, untitled and René Ricard, representing the tension that existed between them. A poet as well as an artist, words featured heavily in his drawings and paintings, with direct references to racism, slavery, the people, and street scene of 1980s New York including other artists, and black historical figures, musicians and sports stars, as his notebooks and many important drawings demonstrate. Very often Basquiat's drawings were untitled, and as such to differentiate works a word written within the drawing is commonly in parentheses after untitled, such as with untitled. After Basquiat died of an overdose at the age of 27, his estate was controlled by his father Gerald Basquiat, who also oversaw the committee which authenticated artworks, and operated from 1993 to 2012 to review over 1,000 works, the majority of which were drawings. Artistic Styles Fred Hoffman hypothesizes that underlying Basquiat's sense of himself as an artist was his innate capacity to function as something like an oracle distilling his perceptions of the outside world down to their essence and, in turn, projecting them outward through his creative acts. Additionally, continuing his activities as a graffiti artist, Basquiat often incorporated words into his paintings. Before his career as a painter began, he produced punk-inspired postcards for sale on the street, and became known for the political poetical graffiti under the name of Samo. On one occasion Basquiat painted his girlfriend's dress with the words, Little Shit Brown. He would often draw on random objects and surfaces, including other people's property. The conjunction of various media is an integral element of Basquiat's art. His paintings are typically covered with text and codes of all kinds, words, letters, numerals, pictograms, logos, map symbols, diagrams and more. A middle period from late 1982 to 1985 featured multi-panel paintings and individual canvases with exposed stretcher bars, the surface dense with writing, collage and imagery. The years 1984-85 were also the main period of the Basquiat-Warhol collaborations, even if, in general, they were not very well received by the critics. A major reference source used by Basquiat throughout his career was the book Grey's Anatomy which his mother had given him while he was in the hospital aged seven. It remained influential in his depictions of internal human anatomy, and in its mixture of image and text. Other major sources were Henry Dreyfus Symbol Sourcebook, Leonardo da Vinci's Notebooks, and Brent's African Rock Art. Heads 
heads are seen as a major focal point of some of Basquiat's most seminal works. Two pieces, Untitled, 1981 and Untitled, 1982, held by the Broad Foundation and Meizawa Foundation, respectively, can be seen as primary examples. In reference to the potent image depicted in both pieces, Fred Hoffman writes that Basquiat was likely caught off guard, possibly even frightened, by the power and energy emanating from this unexpected image. Further investigation by Fred Hoffman of pieces like Masonic Lodge, 1983 and Untitled in his book, The Art of Jean Michel Basquiat, reveals a deeper interest in the artist's fascination with heads that proves an evolution in the artist's server from one of raw power to one of more refined cognizance. Heritage According to Andrea Frone, Basquiat's 1983 painting Untitled reclaims Egyptians as African and subverts the concept of ancient Egypt as the cradle of Western civilization. At the center of the painting, Basquiat depicts an Egyptian boat being guided down the Nile River by Osiris, the Egyptian god of the earth and vegetation. On the right panel of the painting appear the words, Esclava, Slave, Esclava. Two letters of the word, Nile, are crossed out and Frohn suggests that, the letters that are wiped out and scribbled over perhaps reflect the acts of historians who have conveniently forgotten that Egyptians were black, and blacks were enslaved. On the left panel of the painting Basquiat has illustrated two Nubian-style masks. The Nubians historically were darker in skin color, and were considered to be slaves by the Egyptian people. Throughout the rest of the painting, images of the Atlantic slave trade are juxtaposed with images of the Egyptian slave trade centuries before. The sickle in the center panel is a direct reference to the slave trade in the United States, and slave labor under the plantation system. The word, salt, that appears on the right panel of the work refers to the Atlantic slave trade, as salt was another important commodity traded at that time. Another of Basquiat's pieces, Irony of Negro Policemen, is intended to illustrate how he believes African Americans have been controlled by a predominantly Caucasian society. Basquiat sought to portray that African Americans have become complicit with the institutionalized forms of whiteness and corrupt white regimes of power, years after the Jim Crow era had ended. Basquiat found the concept of a Negro policeman utterly ironic. According to him the policeman should sympathize with his black friends, family, and ancestors. Yet instead he was there to enforce the rules designed by white society. The Negro policeman had black skin, but wore a white mask. In the painting, Basquiat depicted the policeman as large in order to suggest an excessive and totalizing power, but made the policeman's body fragmented and broken. The hat that frames the head of the Negro policeman resembles a cage, and represents what Basquiat believes are the constrained independent perceptions of African Americans at the time, and how constrained the policeman's own perceptions were within white society. Basquiat drew upon his Haitian heritage by painting a hat that resembles the top hat associated with the family of, who embody the powers of death in voodoo. However, Kelly Jones, in her essay Lost in Translation, Jean-Michel in the Mix, posits that Basquiat's mischievous, complex, and neologistic side, with regard to the fashioning of modernity and the influence and effluence of black culture, are often elided by critics and viewers, and thus, lost in translation. The art historian Olivier Bergrun situates in Basquiat's anatomical screen prints, titled Anatomy, an assertion of vulnerability, one which creates an aesthetic of the body as damaged, scarred, fragmented, incomplete, or torn apart, once the organic whole has disappeared. Paradoxically, it is the very act of creating these representations that conjures a positive corporeal valence between the artist and his sense of self or identity. Exhibitions Basquiat's first public exhibition was in the group effort The Times Square Show, held in a vacant building at 41st Street and 7th Avenue, New York. In late 1981, Basquiat joined the Arnina Nozai Gallery in Soho. His first one-person exhibition was in 1982 at that gallery. By then, he was showing regularly alongside other neo-expressionist artists including Julian Schnabel, 
David Sal, Francesco Clemente, and Enzo Cucci. He was represented in Los Angeles by the Gargosian Gallery and throughout Europe by Bruno Bischofberger. Major exhibitions of Basquiat's work have included Jean-Michel Basquiat, Paintings 1981-1984 at the Fruit Market Gallery, Edinburgh, which travelled to the Institute of Contemporary Arts, London, and Museum Bymans van Buningen, Rotterdam, in 1985, the Kessner Gieselschaft, Hanover. The first retrospective to be held of his work was the Jean-Michel Basquiat exhibition at the Whitney Museum of American Art from October 1992 to February 1993. It subsequently traveled to the Menil Collection, Houston, the Des Moines Arts Center, Iowa, and the Montgomery Museum of Fine Arts, Alabama, from 1993 to 1994. The catalog for this exhibition, edited by Richard Marshall and including several essays of differing styles, was a groundbreaking piece of scholarship into Basquiat's work and still is a major source. Another exhibition, Basquiat, was mounted by the Brooklyn Museum, New York, in 2005, and traveled to the Museum of Contemporary Art, Los Angeles, and the Museum of Fine Arts, Houston, from October 2006 to January 2007. The first Basquiat exhibition in Puerto Rico took place at the Museo de Arte de Puerto Rico, produced by Art Premium, Corinne Timzit, and Eric Bonici. Brooklyn Museum exhibited Basquiat, The Unknown Notebooks in April-August 2015. In 2017, the Barbican Centre in London exhibited, Basquiat, Boom for Real. Basquiat remains an important source of inspiration for a younger generation of contemporary artists all over the world such as Rita Ackerman and Kedra Tia, as showed for example the Exhibition Street and Studio, from Basquiat to Siri Pop co-curated by Katerine Hug and Thomas Mies Gang at Kunst Halle in 2010. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries. Would you like to know more?